now we'll go into types of signaling. This is where we talk about fixed block and <clears throat> moving block uh, signaling. So what you see here is two tracks. One is the fixed block signaling, and the second, second is the uh, uh, moving block signaling. When you have a, a signal engineer in the conventional sense, the way they see the track <clears throat> is the way I've shown it under the fixed block signal, which is the first, uh, first uh, diagram. They break the track up into a chain of blocks. They're all linked together with signals indicating when a train can move. That's how a signal engineer in the conventional sense views a track. For CBTC, <clears throat> a CBTC engineer, they don't see the track as a chain of blocks. They see a single contiguous track, continuous, unbroken, all the way along the, the, uh, the line. And that is the main, that's the biggest difference between the two types of signaling. Uh, how a signal engineer views the track and how a CBTC uh, engineer views the track. And they are very different <clears throat> between the two. So first, let's talk about uh, fixed block signaling itself. We have the tracks broken up into blocks, one, two, three, four. Uh, it has signals along the, uh, along the track, A, B, C, D, E. Uh, each signal, now depending on the region, if it's North America, we have trip stops. I know in Europe they use these inducies. Um, I'm not sure in India whether it's, it's trip stops or if it's a, a inducy of some kind, but there's some mechanism there to stop the train if it violates the red signal. Um, so you have trip stops is what we call, what we call uh, trip stops themselves. Safety is determined by how far apart the trains will be kept and that's basically within the block themselves. The size of the block determines um, the, the safety part of the system. Headway is determined by how many trains can pass through the system and the shorter the block, the more trains you'll be able to push through that system. So that's the defining characteristics of a fixed block system. If we have two trains on the track, train number eight and train number nine, they're separated by one block. Usually it's a block or two for safety. I'm going to use uh, a two block separate, uh, one block separation or two signals. Um, and uh, there, as long as there's one block separation, it's safe and the train number eight will not move any further uh, from its location in block number one. As train nine moves forward, train eight is given its permissive aspect. It's given permissive aspect of yellow. It's now allowed to, to move forward into block number two. Um, it'll move into block two and stop at signal C. Uh, and as train nine and it move forward, there's, there's an accordion effect uh, of the train. As, as train nine moves forward, train eight follows behind it. Now, the way fixed block signaling is designed is if the train were to violate the red signal, let's say train eight violates signal B, which is at red or restrictive, uh, the trip stop should stop that train. There should be enough of a distance or the size of the block should be long enough, sufficient enough, that if the train pass signal B at, uh, on a red, on a restrictive, the trip stop will, will uh, uh, release the emergency brakes and the train will come to a stop well before uh, signal C. That's the basic concept uh, behind it. And this is called the safety distance. I understand in India it's called the overlap block overlap. Block overlap. Uh, and that's the separation, and that's the safety that's uh, designed into a fixed block signaling system. The problem is, as train nine moves away from signal C, you're seeing this space created. I, I'm calling it a wasted space. It's an artificial separation. And what that basically means is, train eight cannot move. It remains at, at signal B as long as train nine is in, is in block number three, even though train eight can get closer from a safety perspective or a safety distance perspective or a block overlap perspective, there is enough safety distance there for, the, for train number eight to stop. But because of nature of fixed block signaling, as long as train nine is in block three, train eight cannot move. So you have this larger separation that is needed uh, for safety, which is affecting your headway. And that is the main, main problem with uh, fixed block signaling, it's this artificial separation. It doesn't matter how far the train goes in, in block number three, that wasted space and that artificial separation, it continues to grow, but train eight must wait. It has to wait until train nine has moved completely into block four, completely into block four, at which point train eight will be given the permissive aspect and it will be allowed to move forward uh, in, into the next block up to block C. And then the, the effect continues, the, the accordion effect continues where train nine moves forward, once it gets in the next block, train eight is allowed to move forward. But the point that I'm trying to make here is that artificial separation, 
that's uh, that's created uh, is the is the is the problem with fixed block signaling that prevents it from allowing more trains to go through the system to reduce your headways or separation between uh, between trains. So the impact is, as I mentioned, the separation between trains is longer than required for safety, and system throughput is affected. So how how does that differ from CVTC signaling? Well, in the CVTC world, as I mentioned earlier, there are no blocks, there are no signals. Basically, all you see is a single contiguous track um, where the trains can roam free. They can go wherever they want, but the only rule is they have to maintain a safety distance. This distance is basically saying, if I have a worst case failure, worst case propulsion failure where the train acceleration just takes off, time it takes to uh, invoke the EBs and the time that the EBs are actually at 90% uh, efficiency, that's your safety distance. It has to maintain that. Um, the train, train number eight will calculate that safety distance dynamically. So if it's moving at 60 kilometers an hour, it'll calculate what is the minimum distance it has to maintain uh, to, to establish safety. Now, as train nine moves forward, train eight follows it. There is no according effect. So you're keeping that distance to an absolute minimum, which is a safety distance. There is no wasted space. There is no artificial separation. The train, train number eight is following it as close as possible to train number nine. And as train nine, as the speed is reduced, train eight speed is reduced, the separation between the two trains also shrinks uh, closer together. So you're, you're keeping that distance as small as possible regardless of the speed. It is a dynamic calculation, this, this safety distance. As train eight is moving at 60, the separation is longer. As it slows down, let's say to 25, the separation is reduced even further. So the, the separation between the trains is kept to an absolute bare minimum between the trains. And that is the main difference between moving block and, and, uh, and fixed block. Uh, many people assume that CBTC is there or the reason CBTC is selected is because of increased safety. That, that actually is a slight misunderstanding. CBTC is certainly safer. It has a few features in there that do make it safe. But fixed block signaling is a very safe signaling system. It's been proven over the last 140 years. The main reason why authorities, transit authorities, are moving towards CBTC is because they're able to bring these trains very close together, keep the system safe, and be able to move more riders to, through the system. It really is throughput. Um, safety between the two signaling philosophies is, 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 uh, is similar. They're both very safe, although CBTC is a little safer because of the speed protections that it provides and whatnot. But the main difference between fixed block and, and moving block is the fact that the safety distance is kept to a bare minimum. There is no artificial separation, uh, and therefore you can push more trains through the system safely uh, because of this, uh, this approach.